G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map in the color green on the Delhi Sultanate. It's Crackity here. And in the north of the map. Playing as the Mongols on the color orange. It's Kalp. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lippany. We're here on Lippany watching two of the world's best players go up against each other. Currently, I think Kalp is sitting at about rank 15 on the ladder. Crackity here sitting at about rank 20. So these guys are... You, the top echelon that you can get from these games. And of course, both of these guys do live stream over on Twitch. So go check them out. I'll leave links in the description to where you can catch both of them. But let's get ourselves into a little bit of a game. Of course, we've got Mongols up against the Delhi. This is a classic matchup. Matchup that we've seen many a time before, but very rarely on a map that isn't hybrid. Normally, we see them coming out on the hybrid maps because both of these civilizations excel in those hybrid circumstances. So... Interesting to see them bringing these civilizations to this map, of course, Lippany. It's known as an open map. I say open, but take a look at this little forest that we've got right here. Have a look at that. Can you imagine trying to push onto a sacred site with that kind of natural wall? You thought stone walls were broken. <laughs> Mate, you ain't seen nothing yet until you've seen one of those things. Now, speaking of stone walls, obviously you've got the Mongols on one side of the map who aren't even going to be able to make any walls here. So that's going to be a big disadvantage, but obviously a huge part of the way that they play. And let's talk a little bit about this spawn from Cap. This is a great spawn that he's got. Town center, nice and close to this Uvu. Also to the gold, covers both of them and hits the uh, the wood line here. So he's going to be really happy with this spawn. Everything's really nice and close together. Of course, he's got the berries in there. <laughs> Where's the deer? The deer's got to be anywhere, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's quite far away. So you can see that he has moved away pretty far away from uh, where you would traditionally place the town center. I think if it was a normal spawn, probably somewhere around there, I guess, is, is where... Actually, probably around here is where you'd go, wouldn't you? Yeah, about there. Yeah, nice little spawn, though. Ba little back spawn. Let's check in with Crackity and see how he's doing as the wheelbarrows come through. Also looking to pick up efficient production. Uh, so getting in his upgrades early is the Delhi Sultan. And this is a civilization that we have seen absolutely rocket to the top of your ratings. Now, obviously, we haven't done a rating table, a rating chart, a tier list for quite some time, uh, but I did predict that the Delhi Sultanate would be an S-tier civilization in Season 4, and I think that I've been justified, not justified, but uh, validated in that claim. They seem incredibly good at the moment. Uh, a, a lot is uh, is going right for the Delhi Sultanate, so I'm looking forward to seeing how... How Crackity looks to play this game. And already we start to see a barracks coming out early for Crackity. So going to be looking to go up against the Mongols. Obviously, he's scouted out what his enemy's up to. Sees the early barracks and says, well, I kind of got to defend this position. And now does also spot the spears on the way. Whether he sees the two villages or not, that's going to be the telltale sign. Now, before we get into the action, I will just take this opportunity to let you know that if you want to improve, you can check out the Patreon. There's replay reviews, private coaching, and exclusive content all available there on Patreon. So if you haven't already, go check it out. There is plenty of stuff on there. Now we see the two versus one, but hold a minute. Hold on a minute. We've got the Spearman combo looking to come out here. Of course, we've got the Scholar who's jumped inside, and production's going to be pretty decent here for Crackity on the defensive. Kalp going to be looking to try and get this outpost down. This is going to secure stone and gold. If, he, if he's able to get a foothold here, it means that he's preventing keeps in the castle age if it gets to that point and of course gold uh from uh, from ever aging up uh well until you capture sacred sites of course but you can see just how solid that defense has been from crackety really nice job there just up to three spears the question how many more spears or that, that that's the big question for me how many more spears do we see coming out of Kalp now because does he go heavy onto spears or does he just look to go light and it looks like he's going to be quite heavy a little bit of micro coming in here trades out the one for one khan on the backside single spear going to be chasing away a villager Manages to throw away or chase away a couple more. Hold on a minute. That Ville gets pretty low. One health. That's a single scout attack away. But remember that second Ville, it's still doing its work there. And he's going to be able to get it. He secures it. But at what cost? Even if you manage to kill one villager, there's still the second one that's going to be pumping away. The Kandas go down. And surely that's going to be a good game any second now. No, no, no. That's not the case, Strongo. Calm down. And oh my lord, that villager. <laughs> Look at the scout coming in. He's like, mm -mm -mm. you can't stop me, mate. You cannot stop me. I'm going for it. Look at the way he's defending it. Try the best to shut down this rush if this villager goes down the rush is cancelled and i tell you what i think at this point the rush may as well just be cancelled but look at this the spear micro beautiful play from Kalp. he's really trying his best to commit to this early aggression first of the spears does go down second one is going to be coming out he's got more spears on the way eventually this spearman will catch the villager remember that 1.25 versus the 1.12 but he's going to be heading back all the way to the base but not without a death two villagers down 
and everything gets cancelled. So beautiful. <laughs> and it's, isn't it interesting? Like, uh, at least I find this a bit funny or not interesting, but like the difference between a successful defense and an, and an unsuccessful defense is whether you kill those vills. Because if you don't kill those vills, you don't get anything from it. But right now, Crackety's up three vills in this game. Now, technically, he should only be up two vills because he only killed two vills. But obviously, there's been some magic behind the scenes. Uh, maybe a little bit of idle time from Cal uh, has come through. And as a result, it's it's hovering between two, two and a half vills, somewhere around that region. Spearman numbers, numbers still looking good, though. And of course, we do see now that the Silver Tree is going to be coming down on the other side of the map for Cap, and I, I love this. He's got a perfect spawn when it comes for trade. It's right against the edge of the map. In fact, I don't think you can even get closer to the edge of the map than this. This is the best spawn possible for him. So hopefully, we look to see him capitalize on that trade, maybe even look to set a home market or, or move a market up into this top corner, but obviously, there's a wolf up there guarding it, but let's, let's worry about that later. We've got our Scholar coming out to provide a little bit of a helping hand. Scout, get back there, Scout. Watch out. We saw what happened earlier to the Khan. Do I do I dare remind you all? Uh, but now Harden Spearman going to be coming in immediately here for Kalp. We can see that upgrade. It's going to be eight seconds away. And once that comes through, he's going to be able to apply pressure on this mining camp. And it looks almost certain that it'll be going down because Dome of the Faith comes through. And remember, it's going to take a while to get that upgrade in for Crackety as well. So there's the hardened upgrade now arriving. If he wants to take this fight, he can go for it, but you're up against Spearmen that have got more health, have got more damage, and got much cooler hats, I guess is probably the best way to say it. Uh, but a lot of injured spears in here, and you can see slowly and steadily this scholar is managing to heal up these spears, getting them up to full health. And Cap's going to say, you know what? I think we're just going to have to leave it at that. So probably the right decision. And take a look at this. We got double trader production coming out already. He spent a lot of his stone on this. This is going to be two sets of traders now going to be coming out. These guys are going to be making their way across the map. And one of the things he's going to be cognizant of is the presence of an enemy looking to come out and wall this trading post in. But I got good news for him. I suspect. I don't think you're going to be able to get a wall through here. Have a look at this. Let's, let's dive deep down into it. Take a look at that. You reckon you can fit a wall through there? I know that, you know, people people from Age of Empires 3 would be like, Drongo, you can get a wall through that. Easy, mate. I don't know what you're on about. But anybody who's played a bit of Age of Empires 4 will know that that's going to be hard to squeeze through. And the reason why you'd be looking for it is because the Delhi Sultanate can obviously make walls with their infantry. So Crackety, if he, if he so pleases... Now, we can see the scout coming across the map, and you know exactly why he's doing that. He needs to know what landmark did you age up with. And obviously, we already know the answer. We're sitting in the driver's seat... Or, or the pilot seat, I guess you could say. We've got perfect vis vision. We know exactly what's going on. And I think as soon as he realizes, hold on a minute, there's no deer stones here, but he hasn't got the confirmation yet. Where are those deer stones? Where are the deer stones? No, wait, it's not deer stones. It's the silver tree. And of course, he heads up to that top corner. I don't think he spotted out the, uh, the, the market on this side, but he knows that his market's over here, or rather his trading post. So naturally... Oh, oh, well, 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 look who it is. So I would be surprised if we didn't see these spears immediately make their way over towards here and start looking to set up some walls. Let's see what he does. Actually, no, he's going to come up towards this position and look to look to go on that one. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but uh, we, he now gets confirmation that the traders are heading in that westerly direction. Let's have a look and see what these traders are pulling in. Now, remember, the Mongols have got a number of ways they can buff up their traders. Notably, they can increase the movement speed. Uh, with the YAM network, of course, they get access to the YAM network through any outposts. So you don't actually have to research any technologies to get that. You do get that for free on your traders and your cavalry. Uh, just remember, traders are technically cavalry, but don't technically get counted by spears. So it's a, it's a bit of a weird interaction. But uh, there's also the uh, the Silk Road upgrade, which is going to add in those extra resources. You can see them right there. 10% of your total income going to be coming through as food, eventually as wood, and of course, eventually as stone in the Imperial Age. That upgrade comes through. But archers, together with the spears, going to be moving in on this blacksmith. Looking to siege it down. He's going to need to pull villagers if he wants to keep this alive. An expensive building. Undoubtedly, he will want to have this up. But look at this. The counterattack from Crackety. An interesting move. I think a lot of people would have just brought these units back and said, well, I've got to defend this position. But uh, it, it seems that Kalp is probably going to be caught unawares by this. The spear's still moving up in that direction, yet to really push any further. Taking a look from Kalp's perspective, though, he's got outposts that are going up, but interestingly going up on the sacred sites. I don't know what this is all about. Obviously, he's moving towards 
the castle age, but I guess just looking to defend against the Delhi. Of course, that's what it is. He he's not thinking proactively to defend himself. He's thinking, well, I've got to stop the Delhi from getting up. So this is making a lot of sense. I'm I'm liking the fact he's doing that, and we now do cross the ten minute mark. So I'll make sure I get the income up there for you guys. You'll be able to see that. But the ten minute mark is normally that threshold that already these sacred sites should have been captured. I expected to hear dings by now, and I don't hear any dings donged just yet for Crackity. So he's a little bit behind the eight ball and where he should be. And take a look at this. Hold on. Hold the. <laughs> Oh, oh my lord, what a beautiful play. I was not expecting this. I thought he's going to come and siege it down. He says, Drongo, siege? Mm -mm -mm. That's not what we're about. We're about walling, baby. He's not going to wall the he's not going to wall the trading posts. He's got he's got to wall the silver tree. Oh, I did not expect that. Now, what he could do, well, what Kalp could do in this position is just build a market right here and just kind of laugh at his enemy. Uh, bring a couple of archers to kill these units, build build the market here and just, you know, keep living his life, that kind of thing. But it, it is going to result in him bringing up all of the... I <laughs> did not expect that. That is hilarious. Oh, my Lord. We got to get a we got to get a picture of that one. That one's going on the thumb now for sure. Uh, I, I mean, how much more could you one up a game by from this point on, right? Like, this is hilarious. I don't think we've ever seen somebody wall in the silver tree with spears as the Delhi. I think it's probably a pretty rare interaction as well that you'll get, just simply because Delhi versus the Mongols is not a common matchup, at least not anymore on these kind of land maps. So the first of the walls is going to go down. He could actually put a gate on this if he wanted to, but he's not going to be bothering. Obviously, a lot of archers there will be ready to attack. And now moving forward, we'll ride on board with Kalp as he looks to defend up against some of these archers. Yet to take any sacred sites just yet. Arrow Slits has come through on the first, on the second, and the third outpost. Just picked them up on all of them. Fourth one coming in now. Fifth one. Uh, actually, that, that that was the second sacred site, Drongo. But you're so close. Compound of the Defender. Look at... Oh, my Lord. Look at this. He didn't even go for the sacred sites. He just went straight castle. This is big brain stuff coming out from Crackety. Crackety pulling out all stops here. Finally, now, these traders going to be coming through. Do have that extra 10% gold and 10% uh, wood also being thrown in there. So... They're, they're enjoying life right now, and we do see that silver tree. He's going to be able to stay alive. A little bit under 50% health here, but of course, should be all fine. So, if anything, Crackety has just delayed this inevitable boom from his opponent and hasn't really secured much from it. So, I think the question is, was it worth it? You lost a lot of spears from that, but you did buy yourself time. And I think that's probably something that we need to acknowledge as a, a real uh, important thing. Because when you're going fast castle... When you need to get to Castle Age because you you want access to special units like or armored units like the Men at Arms, like the Knight, the Lancer, you want to make sure you've got space to do that. And it's going to be hard for you to gather up the resources that you need, like this gold, for example, if your enemy's on your doorstep. So what do you do? You send your units over towards the enemy side of the, the map and, well, you make them run. So really smart move and Crackety going to be lying in wait once again, picking off a couple of units here, just... Once again, going to be trying to draw the enemy over here. Is he going? Oh, he's going up for a rewall. I think he might be going for it. Very, very smart if he is, but unfortunately did not micro. Not not, not didn't micro, but didn't take it the way that he should have. Now, th the smart thing for Kalp to do right now is just to bring a villager and stand inside this wall. The problem that he's going to have is that there's two walls there. So he could potentially keep sending units up here and looking to rewall this nonstop. Arislet's going to be coming through. Plenty of traders in queue. He's going up for it again. And we do see now some of those important upgrades are coming through. We've got village fortresses on the way in right now for Crackety. This is an important upgrade for the Delhi Sultanate. There's the villagers coming out. Arislet's is going to get through. Now, just remember, if he's able to make it to the other side, oh, he, he gives up. He says, you know what? I know I'm not going to be able to get there. And unfortunately, he, he taps out a little bit early. But the Vils, I like the Vils being brought over to the outpost to help support, kill these archers before they come through. Smart move, though. Do we see men at arms coming out? I'd love to see like two or three men at arms moving to the edge of the map, coming up to the side, walling in, just like constantly walling in the silver tree. Because even though it doesn't really stop the trade, it it, it does pause it. And I think that's probably what you want to be doing, right? Like as, as long as it's happening nonstop. Now, interestingly, we don't see any sacred sites taken yet. We do see relics getting picked up though. Already three relics in the bag at the moment for Crackety. So he is having an absolute cracker of a game. And keep in mind the Dome of the Faith was changed recently. So the Dome of the Faith used to just be a Dome of the Faith. That was it. It was a landmark. But now they actually made it a mosque, which means that it can hold relics. It can do your research for you. And of course, it can train scholars at a discounted cost. Your normal scholar is going to be 130 gold. Your Dome of the Faith scholar, 65. So that is very nice. But now the keep going to be in this lovely forward position here. You're going to be keeping everything safe. 
And that's going to send Kalp back to the drawing board. And he says, well, what do I do from here? Well, Kalp, you know what you keep doing, buddy? You just keep trading. You have a lovely day, my friend. You just keep trading. You keep making traders. And I love seeing this from Mongol players. I feel like Mongol players need to do this more because they, they really don't. The problem is going to be this trade route. I mean, this is going to be something that's very exposed throughout this game because of how far forward this trading post is. Now, of course, it could be much worse. It could be down here. But the reality is that you'd love it to be in this corner. And that just makes trade so much safer when it's back there. So it really is in quite a forward position. Men at Arms now going to start moving out. Could be looking to wall in the trading post over on the west side. That, that could be what he's thinking about. Or maybe just moving out, trying to find a little, do a little bit of scouting. Now, relics have been picked up. So far, four relics are in the bag. Fifth one coming in now for Crackety. Unfortunately, it does get dropped down. Kuril Tai going to be going down as well. Let's take a look and see where, where that one is. Beautiful little spot. And look at this. One, two, three stables getting thrown down. There's obviously no Uvu here. But of course, any anything that you're gathering from the Uvu at this point in the game, when your economy is this big as the Mongols, you probably want to be spending it on things like upgrades. You know, improved siege engineering, as an example, is really, really good right now. And it's unlikely that he's got that, considering I don't... Oh, no, he, he does have a blacksmith somewhere. There it is. Uh, yeah, but we don't have improved siege engineering just yet. So that's something that you want to be saving towards. So let's ride on board with Crackety and see how he's doing as he drops down a second keep in the center of the map on top of this stone. Remember that his stone is going to be a, a really important resource throughout this game. So expect him to be looking to try and do a bit of market trading for it. Remember that the compound of the defender is going to be reducing the cost of all of his stone buildings throughout this game. That includes walls, gates, towers, uh, town centers. Of course, it reduces the cost of keeps. So you've got plenty of things uh, that are affected by this. And it, it's, it's really the gift that keeps on giving because you've just got a, a huge reduction in the amount of cost of stone. And it allows you to just keep building things with stone so I, you know what i wouldn't be surprised if he like deletes these walls and then comes up here and just builds stone walls that would actually be hilarious i wonder if he does that he, he's he's kind of in a position to do it now i saw he was getting forced march as well was it is it forced march yeah forced march coming through in eight seconds so he could a hundred percent like a linebacker not like a linebacker like, like a linebacker like a running back he could just blitz through the defense here and be like excuse me sir actually there there's now there's lances on the defense it's going to be a little bit harder. But let's see what he looks to do. He does have for Forced March available. He could just look to stonewall this off or something like that. He's, he's just going to he's just gonna jump into the, the, the trade line and, and just camp it up for the moment. One shot's the first of the traders. Next. Who's next? Uh, <laughs> this is where I, I, I just love this kind of creative deli play where you've got these walls like this. It's absolutely hilarious. And we got a counterattack on the other side of the map. A couple of relics back here. Just one actually in the bag at the moment. Keep in mind, he's got three, four, five. A lot of mosques. I don't know what all these mosques are about. I'd have to look into it. But now the men at arms are going to get caught out of position. Lancers doing a really good job as they do chase after the men at arms that are chasing after the caravans, which are chasing after the gold. And we now have a couple more villagers making their way out over towards this east spot, looking to try and pincer all of these units down on the south side. They're going to make their way through. And we do hear the relics getting picked up. He... Don't know. I don't know what his, what his plan is with these guys can always be a little bit hard with the relics and the deli. Not the easiest of civilizations to micromanage. And the men at arms just deciding, you know what, we're just gonna we're just gonna give in to it. At the moment, Crackety on nine men at arms. If we have a look on at the moment, eight of them are in the enemy trade line, and he did manage to kill all the lancers, but more gonna be joining. And now Archer's just chilling out of the back. What is Crackety going for here? I guess he's probably gonna move into farms. Actually, look at all the berries that he's got. In fact, look at the, all the food he's got right here. He's sitting on zero food a minute, but I tell you what, don't be discouraged by that. The madman is going to... That was a little bit delayed. I don't know what that was all about. W was the mill not complete or something? I don't think the mill was complete. Maybe that's what it was. But all the berries popped up at the same time. Uh, and we're like, oh yeah, we're, 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 we're berries. We, we, we are berries that are buffed. All right, so Sacred Sight's starting to get picked up. I hear relics being picked up, but I think it's just Crackety moving them around. Indeed, it is three relics here. There was a fourth relic inside this one. Has it been picked up? It has been picked up. It, it looks like it's been snagged away. Actually, no, it's... That's a sacred site. It's on the ground. Never mind. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Another keep getting dropped down. And you could you can actually start to see a pattern as to where Crackety is dropping his keeps. Look at this. Drops the keep, exhausts the stone, moves on to the next stone, drops a keep, exhausts the stone, moves on to the next stone, drops a keep, exhausts the stone, moves on to the next stone. 
That's that's not a stone drunk. That's a ram. That's a golden ram. In fact, that that is a conqueror ram. Look at that bad boy right there. I wonder if that is is are there going to be rams this game? You'd, you'd have to think there's going to be rams this game if if Kalp has got a ram as he's like as his town center monument. Oh my god! And Ka and Kraken, he's got one as well. Oh, there is going to be rams. I don't know where they are. Hisar Academy, Pisa uh, Delhi Fast Imperial. What? Just when you thought that this was going on the thumbnail. Surprise, surprise. We've got two thumbnail-worthy moments in this game for you, ladies and gentlemen. Something I wasn't expecting. It's rare that you get a thumbnail moment twice in a game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the Palace of the Sultan's going to be able to bring to the table now. Remember, this landmark has been changed in the most recent patch. I say the most recent patch like it happened three days ago. No, it didn't happen three days ago. This patch happened a couple of weeks ago. They reworked all the landmarks, and the Palace of the Sultan was one of those landmarks. Let's take a look and see exactly what it does. The Palace of the Sultan automatically produces Sultan's Elite Tower Elephants. It can garrison up to four scholars in the landmark to increase production speed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Imperial Age. You're now witnessing the very first Delhi Fast Imperial of Season 4. I'm excited. I'm very excited. He's got keep securing up the map. He doesn't die. Like, the, the, what does he die to here? He does, he's got boiling oil, so there's no massive units he's going to die to. He doesn't die to trebuchets because trebuchets are slow, and they're going to take a long time to, to kill all of his, his keeps that he's going to have to get through. The only thing that he's really going to be able to do is kind of get in there and just be annoying, right? Like, even at this point here, Vil's just jump in the, in, the, in the keep. He's got the boiling oil underneath. You're not going to be able to kill this. Like, you're going to need more rams. I think that's probably the best way to do it is rams actually make a lot of sense here. We've already talked about it twice. We do see a second ram coming out is he gonna go into more rams here i see three in production i just don't see them in production are they being hidden somewhere oh he's making them from a siege workshop isn't he oh he is too yeah look at this one two three yeah he's got three siege workshops that's where they are so it doesn't have improved siege engineering yet interesting decision can we check the blacksmith yeah, no improved siege engineering. <laughs> no siege engineering. He's like, who needs infantry to make rams? I'll just make them from my siege workshops. Okay, respect. Sacred victory now approaching for Cup. Now remember, Imperial Age has just come through for Crackety. He's hitting his Imperial Age timing. Oh my lord, look how quickly the upgrades are coming through. How many? Oh, oh damn, look at this. He's on 22 scholars. Oh damn. <laughs> Damn, dude. Crackety actually going ham. Crackety read the Delhi handbook and the devs were like, hey, uh, for anybody wondering, you can put uh, you can put lots of scholars inside your buildings and you can make your research go really quickly. And Crackety's like, hmm, oh, actually you can. Look at that. Oh my Lord. He's getting like full elite upgrades right now. Let's take a look at this. You've got elite men at arms. You've got, I don't even know what this is called, copulation. You've got precision crossbreeding. He's getting every single upgrade. This is the Delhi Fast Imperial that I never thought I'd see coming out right now. If anything, I thought this would come out from like Viper or something. Here you go. This is it. The Sultan's Elite Tower Elephant. I'm so excited right now. It's got the hand cannoneers on top. Look at him go. Look at him go. He's just like, he's, all, he's not one-shotting, but he's doing a pretty decent job. White Stupor coming down for Kalp now. He heads towards the gold, and the villagers are like, bro, there's two of us down here. We're really not that fast. He looks like he's going to be able to surround the elite tower elephant, and it's going to get two shot. Good night, sweet prince. Villagers going to be looking here to try and escape as best they can. Plus two's already through. Plus three's on the way. Remember that. Plus three is on the way. And these keeps looking to shell down this central location. Not a lot of units out for him. He's got two hand cannoneers on the field and 24 scholars. That is how Crackety is playing. And now on the front side, or on the front side, I guess you could call it the front side. He's got battering rams that he's going to have to deal with. And why are these battering rams healing? Excuse oh, the Kurultai! The Kurultai! I completely forgot about the Kurultai! The Kurultai is healing the battering rams? Of course it is. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it heal the battering rams, Drongo? You, you, you Drongo? Oh, Lord. All right, White Stupa almost finished. Villagers do have their plus, their plus one, their textiles. Uh, plus three now coming through at 24 minutes. He's got all of his elite upgrades, his imperial upgrades. Villagers managed to make it inside the keep. Keep the keep alive a little bit longer. How many keeps can you fit in the keep, keep, keep? How, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? How much keeps could a keep, keep, keep? Uh, a lot is the answer. Uh, villagers managing to make it out alive and, uh, and survive for a little bit longer. But I tell you what, this is a this is a cracker of a game. I came into this thinking, all right, we're going to see some memes. We're going to see some dreams. And it turns out all we've actually seen is like good quality games so far. Upgrades coming through. What do we got here? We got Monastic Shames, uh, which allows prayer tents. Uh, prayer tents allow improved production within their influence, even without an Uvu. There you go. Uh, a technology that I've seen a total of two, two times. 
Uh, where does where does that even come from? I don't even. Is it here? It's at the monastery, right? Yeah, it's at the at the prayer tent, rather. All right, we're pushing towards the sacred site. Hand cannoneers together with a Sultan's Elite Tower Elephant. These these guys are two hand cannoneers on top of a tower elephant. These guys have got ten ranged armor. And so, like, have a look at that. They got 102 damage on the tusks with 50 extra against buildings. Outposts, sprinkled emplacements coming through. Sacred site is being neutralized. Not enough units in this vicinity at all. There are a couple of lances down on the south side that managed to knock some relics onto the ground. But it's not going to matter too much as this sacred victory does get cancelled out. And we're back to an even Stevens ball game, ladies and gentlemen. We got Crackety a little bit behind from Cap when it comes to the score. But I tell you what, don't worry too much about the score. Worry about the state of the game as a new Khan rises from the dead like a, like a zombie. <laughs> Look at the battering rams that are coming in. He's getting the battering ram upgrade. Light. Oh my god, it's lightweight beams improved. Get out of town. Look at this. He's getting the improved lightweight beams. Where is he even getting this? I need to see. It's over here. It's over here. Increases the battering ram attacks me by 60% and reduces their field construction time by 75%. What is this upgrade? Get out of town. <laughs> what? Reduces it by 75%? So a battering ram at the moment, if you were going to build one of those bad boys on the field, how long do they take? Do I have any infantry out here? I guess I can check corpse or cowps. Let's have a look here. Battering rams take a minute and 20 seconds. That's going to bring it down to, to 80, 20 seconds. That's 20 seconds for one unit to make that. Now, he doesn't actually have any infantry on the field at the moment, but there it is. Uh, does he even have siege engineering at this point? Let me check. He doesn't even have siege engineering. I love that. Th that is crazy. I've never seen that Mongol upgrade before. But something tells me this is going to be a pivotal. <laughs> Look at the battering rams. He's got 13 rams. We talked earlier about the fact that someone could be going to the ranch this game. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we are in for an absolute field day. Look at the trade. How many traders are we up to right now? Let's check in with Cap. He's up to 69 traders. That is a nice amount of traders to have. He's lost a couple, but he's managed to clean up the trade line. The elite lances have come through. Plus twos and plus ones only for him at the moment. No plus threes just yet on those upgrades. Take a look at the uh, Crackety, though. Crackety just having a field day when it comes to his upgrades. Still upgrading like a madman. Elite spears coming through. Elite crossbows. He's getting all the upgrades, and fair enough. So yeah, should as the army of battering rams make their way across this map. I, You know what? I thought that we had a, a, a thumbnail moment earlier when we had the Palace of the Sultan getting created. But I have quickly realized, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the rare games where we have got a triple thumbnail moment. We, we have got battering ram. I don't even know what you call it. We, someone is officially going to the ranch. You know, we talk about 18 naked cowboys. <laughs> well, I got, well, I can, how, how's this for you? I got 13 naked, quite literally naked rams. There's nothing protecting these guys. And now, oh my God, he's going to get the bounty bonus from killing. Look at this. He's killing all the farms. So these rams are actually getting mad payback right now. He's just, <laughs> he's just going through the base of Crackety. Crackety would be pulling his hair out like, right now. Like, what the hell do I do to deal with this? And he's going to pull the vills, but look how much he's losing from these. These rams are expensive. Or these, um... These outpo these these farms are expensive. These are 75 wood apiece, and you get the refund from the battering rams, taking them out. Look at look how fast they attack as well. Take a look at this. Boom. 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 <laughs> Machine gun rams right there. He almost manages to take out the mining camp as well. Dude. Where's my ram? Wow. Okay. Mongol Imperial Ram is a strategy. And Kalp looks like he may be the first to pioneer this strategy. And to be honest, I'm excited to see more of this. I'm looking forward to seeing what is on the horizon for this strategy because this is a hot strategy. This is hot off the presses. Look at the upgrades that are now starting to come through as well. It, it is just, it, it, there's so many upgrades here because both of these guys are Imperial. This is a ludicrous game. Armored beasts coming through, 25% health and extra four ranged armor to war elephants. Keep in mind, war elephants are not the tower elephants. They're not the Sultan's tower elephants. They are war elephants. Those are the elephants that are made in your stable these bad boys right here so a little bit of extra health a little bit of extra ranged armor definitely going to be going a long way for these guys so they do now have an imperial upgrade and now the horsemen can be moving onto the north side of the map looking to try and shut down some trade i suspect take a look at these traders how much they're pulling through they've got that extra stone that's coming in now as well more and more upgrades we see is that improved bounty stone bounty improved uh, so that's going to give you an extra 75 stone for igniting a building. Oh my god, he's actually going to go for a ram! <laughs> he's, this is an actual strategy! This 100% can work! You just go and target 
go and target enemy farms. And see, the thing is, Crackity can't even stop these with stone walls. Let's say you put up stone walls or keeps. You, what, how is it going to defend? It's, it's not going to do anything. All it's going to do is just kind of like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't do anything. The, the battering rams have got so much damage, especially against walls. They get an extra 200 against walls. So they're going to be absolutely fine. Improved stone bounty comes through. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we have got ourselves a triple thumbnail moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the battering rams are the true heroes of this story. Improved improved bounty together with improved battering ram attack speed like what is this game right now let's take a look and see some of the numbers that are going to be coming through for cap the first hit comes in the boar gets involved on the action 75 oh my god 75 stone 75 gold 75 food look how fast he's taking down the, the key <laughs> Dude, I can't control myself. This is hilarious. I can't believe this is an actual strategy. <laughs> this is so good. Who would have thought that coming into this game, Kalp was playing the long game. He's like, mm, you think that by not taking these sacred sites, I'm going to fall for your bait? Watch. <laughs> Seemed workshops. He's going for procs. <laughs> this game is amazing. This is probably the best game I've ever seen. Up until this point, this is an amazing game. <laughs> this is incredible. Kalp on 170 population compared to his opponent on 200. But now we've got ourselves a bit of a war elephant push. These guys have got 1,200 health. I'm trying to keep it together over here. I do <laughs> choice. He's, he's making the rest. He's got proxy siege workshops. Oh, dude, who needs villagers when you got rams? My lord. Oh, God, he's got 12,000 gold. Oh, my lord. Okay, he doesn't need any more resources than what he's got already. He's up 2k score, but I guess a lot of that's going to be the gold. Okay, Drongo. Keep it together, Drongo. Keep it together. Keep it... <laughs> All right. We're okay. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the status... Uh, the state of this game. What's what's Crackety's win condition? I feel like it's just flooding the enemy at this point. Looking to try and kill landmarks is definitely a good way for him to win this game. The problem that he's going to have is obviously the Mongols. They're a mobile... They're, they're, <laughs> they're a mobile force. And speaking of mobile forces, ladies and gentlemen, if it isn't the Ram Ranch from the south side, watch it. Cover your southern angles, ladies and gentlemen. The Rams are coming in once <laughs> again. Dude, I'm losing my mind watching this game right now. This is amazing. This is by far the best game I've ever seen in my life. I can tell you that right now. Goodbye, the Viper. Goodbye, Marine Lord. Goodbye, Beastie. It was nice knowing you. The hero of today is going to be the, the Imperial Ram. These guys are the true heroes of this story. This is crazy. Remember that every time he takes out a building down here, he's getting a huge... Oh, God, he's going for the kill. He's going for the kill. He's focusing the Dome of the Faith. The town center's here as well. Where's the third landmark? The, the compound of the Defender is down here as well. Fourth town, fourth landmark is the Palace of the Sultan. It's over here, a little bit far away. He's got the, the relics nice and safe. Keeps him out, gets him out. Manages to escape with the relics. And now going to be rallying over towards that position. Managing to hold it on the outpost defense coming through. Who needs keeps when you got outposts? Who needs villages when you got rams? And now the rams, look how much look how much uh, resources they're going to be getting right here on this battering, this bunk. 75, 75, 75. 225 resources immediately refunding those battering rams. There we see it again. Uvu gets depleted. Who cares about the Uvu? Get off my screen. And Kaup is looking so solid in this game. This game is, this is, this is beyond a meme. This is not even a joke at this point. This is like, go to your therapist, talk about elite rams from the Mongols. This is real. This can hurt you. Oh my God. Oh God. This is, <laughs> this is actually hilarious. So next question, how does Crackety defend this? How does he possibly defend this, right? Outposts aren't going to work. Walls aren't going to work. Keeps aren't going to work. What's the compound of the defender do? Oh, infantry can build stone walls. And it reduces the cost of all the buildings, including keeps. I, I, I genuinely don't know what he does. How do you defend this? Because you, you need to, you need your units. Did the developers go too far? Oh my God. Did the devs go too far? Uh, elite Rams too good now. He picks up the, uh, the additional health upgrade. We now see another upgrade coming through. Stone Commerce improved because, well, why not? Why wouldn't you get the improved Stone Commerce upgrade when you've got all of these Rams providing you beautiful amounts of stone on the backside? And now more and more production going to get thrown down here from Crackety. He's still maintaining a 200 pop uh, limit at the moment. Huge amount of scholars here as well. And I, I think these scholars, you can probably just delete them at this point. Once you've got all the upgrades, like sure, they're nice to have for heals, but are heals really what you need right now? I feel like even 29 villagers just running around killing rams would be so much better than this. 
Oh, look at this. Oh, really unfortunate because the melee units need to get in on top. Town Center is going to go down here. And he does lose the second landmark. Third landmark slowly getting repaired. There's, there's three out of four. Three out of four, a single landmark remains. The Palace of the Sultan we talked about at the hero of our second potential thumbnail moment. And look at this. How many scholars would you like? Yes. That is the answer. Yes. Nice little defense here. Only way you're going to be able to deal with this is Trebs. Remember the, the range on a cannon. It's 10 tiles. What's the range on, an, on a bombard? 10 tiles. These guys do very well against bombards. The only way you're going to be able to deal with it is Trebs. But remember, Trebs have a 90% hit rate against your outposts. So ideally, you want to try and bring two Trebs to deal with them. Loses the elephant. Healing coming out. You would expect it to be more than this. There you go. Now he's out of combat. It's like... Broom, puts the NOS on. He's going ham. There's the Bombard out. But remember, Bombard not going to do a whole lot here. And now Stone Walls going to be coming down on the south side. But remember, the Stone Walls are going to be meaningless here against these just rampaging rams. And that's really what this is. I mean, look at these rams go, Kalp. Now on the offensive, looking to clean up some more rams. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be taking that food. I'll be taking that gold. I'll be taking that stone all the way home. And it looks like finally he's going to be sacrificing these scholars, which is a great call from him. He's down to 14. No, is that, are these scholars? Here we go. Three scholars? No, 12 scholars. Oh my Lord. Sometimes I get a little bit confused right there. Uh, but yeah, needs to be making sure these scholars get thrown away. Uh, he needs to turn these into military units and he's already up to 200. 52 horsemen. He could be thinking about going for a snipe himself. Actually, this is a great way to deal with the outposts that are littering the map right now. Uh, and interestingly, doesn't decide... Okay, never mind. He's already down here. Uh, going to be looking to siege down all these siege workshops and that's going to be the best way to deal with it. Honestly, you want you want to kind of cut him off at, at that, that point. It just makes a lot of sense. I feel like killing traders might actually be a bad, uh, a bad idea as well. So I think the best thing that, that Crackety can do in this position is kill the siege workshops and then wall off that section of the map, right? And I, I feel like even stone walls might not be the best idea because at the end of the day, the rams can just go through the stone walls anyway. And that's your threat. Your threat is the rams. So just make palisades. And then that way, just slowly palisade the wall, the, the, the map. As long as you give yourself a gate so you can always come back through. Nice little raid attempt here. From Crackety up towards the north. We do see those traders continuing to make their way through. And a bit of a push on the front side now. A, a lack of trebuchets here for Crackety is definitely notable. But we do see the tower elephants. Remember, these guys have got a lot of siege. Everyone in the same formation. Looking to push forward. Kurultai, long and truly dead. But have a look at this. All those battering rams are finally paying off, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. So many emplacements now coming through. And Kalp just looking to play base defense. Almost like it's plants versus zombies. We've talked about zombies earlier. How do you even clear this out? I mean, you've got to drop your own keeps. You've got to look to treb this down. I don't think... Can you really go units up against this? It's just such such cost-effective defense. And look at the resources Kalp's got in the bank. These guys only cost 300 stone. It's not a huge amount. And now the Siege Workshop's going to be running away from those, those horsemen. Definitely a great call here. I'd love to see more walls now brought up. Bring up some more walls. Throw them down over here. Bring up another set. You want to just keep walling off. Meanwhile, on the main front, Crackety pushing in. Hold on a minute. We'll take a look at this population difference. We're on 88 pop versus 22. Crackety might be going for the kill here. Where are the landmarks? That's going to be the question. Town center, nice and safe underneath all of these outposts with the, the cannon emplacements. It's white stupor at the back. Plenty of of uh, of <laughs> plenty, plenty of pastures here. Pastures, uh, the, the sheep are at the maximum limit. And Crackety just looking to try and camp out his opponent, looking to hit the production, doing a really decent job here. A battering ram getting in on the action. I like that he gave that battering ram a command. It's like, hey, you go here in, in, <laughs> in, in this fight. But still the production. How many production buildings does Crackety have or Corp have at the moment to defend? Looking to just produce hand cannoneers. Not a lot of units. He's really going to be relying on this core of outposts. And you can see so many villagers looking to drop it down. Not a lot of resources in the bank. Kalp not having the best be best position. Well, right on board with him as he looks to try and defend this. You can see he's under attack from multiple angles. At, at the top of the base, he's under attack. More attacks coming through in the center. Reinforcements looking to come through. This could be a good game right here. Crackety is doing really well. But slowly the defense is building from Kalp. 
He's, he's slowly but steadily getting on top of it. How many traders are we on? That's a decent question. 52. So still really, really good traders. I love that the Silk Road numbers are like, hey, tier one. Oh yeah, bro. That's three traders. Tier four. Oh wow, man. You've really gone crazy. Nine traders. It's like, dude, I had nine traders at like four minutes into the game. Shut up. Like <laughs> these bonuses are so stupid. Like why do you even have tiers? Just give them the bonus and zero traders. It's so ludicrously easy to get. Like how is that even a thing? Just give it to at zero or, or just actually make it meaningful because it's like what i mean wh what would be a meaningful change like 10 20 30 40 would probably be more meaningful maybe not that crazy but like i don't know 10 15 20 25 something like that it just it, <laughs> it just seems a bit funny where it's like yeah three five seven nine yeah you're fine like oh you got nine traders you've been working hard bro have some stone it's like excuse me i find that offensive i've got 49 traders and i've just lost half of them and that's the number after I lost half. Anyway, 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 we move on. Kalp looking to try and recover. If there's one way that Kalp holds, it is through this outposts. Th this outpost, it's through, it's through this outpost formation. It's rather beautiful. Where are the landmarks? Landmark one, landmark two, landmark three, landmark four. Does he go for a snipe attempt? Honestly, he could go. I feel like he could just go for a snipe attempt at this point. The problem he's going to have are these outposts. How do you get through? I guess the trebs. Trebs are probably the best way. And now we've got on the south side, elite spearmen coming in. Just looking to bring some trash to the party. Crackney's economy powering through. He, he's actually doing fine now that the rams have subsided. <laughs> now, that, now that the relentless ram raids have subsided, Crackety here is able to put on a counter attack. He's able to get... Is he able to get some rams of his own? No, he's going into bombard. See, this is how you know Crackety's an amateur. If, if he was a true professional, he'd be going into rams like the rest of the world. Oh my lord. I can't believe that, that Kalp got so close with the ram strategy. You know what Kalp's missing at this point? He's missing rams. Honestly, we need to see more rams. <laughs> we need to see more rams from Kalp at this point. Uh, th this has been... This has been something special. Hold on a minute. We got five mangonels coming out. Six mangonels. Two more in, in, in queue at the moment. This is a scary amount of mangonels. And you got to remember here, he's playing the Mongols, which means... Oh my... Dude, jeez. Kalp, dude. Wow. Calm down. He's got access to improved roller shutter triggers, which means a, a total range of 13 on your spring orts, which means that you actually have in the late game pretty close to siege superiority at least the closest you can get to now now that they've nerfed the chinese bombards you can't get pyrotechnics on the bombards anymore uh, but but i mean look at the outposts that are coming up here there, there is how many outposts are we on let's take a look at the villages here it will tell us and we are on 42 outposts that's a fair amount of outposts so you can see right now that the bombard is able to take out the outposts but the outposts are able to return fire so as long as you've got villagers healing, you'll be okay. I'd love to see, like, maybe a second or a third uh, bombard just so he can one-shot these outposts and then get through them a little bit faster. But he's doing a really decent job of keeping his distance. I'm impressed. Mang oh my lord, those mangonel shots. Eight mangonels. It Are you telling me that there is a potential for thumbnail moment in this game? Eight mangonels? When was the last time you saw eight mangonels in a game? Cap actually getting back up to 189 population here. This is kind of wild. How did Count manage to get back up? I guess it was the trade, maybe? Was it was it all the leftovers from the Rams? Was that what did it? I got no idea. I got no idea, but slowly and steadil steadily, Crackety is mining out this map. He's just taken away a gold on the front side. There's a big stone back here. Another gold. He's throwing down a keep just to keep it safe. And now those mangonels... Oh my god, look how fast those mangonels are going, dude. What the hell? 0.9 movement speed? Do they have yam? They don't have yam, do they? No, they don't have yam. I remember they used to. They took away that bonus from China, and then they were like, yeah, we're going to leave it for the Mongols. I was like, excuse me, take it away from the Mongols. And then they did. <laughs> Good. Look at this. I, I, I mean, I, I, you got to remember with mangonels, once you get to the critical mass, they counter everything. That's the good thing about them. You can see how much damage they're putting out on the horsemen here. They don't care that they're cavalry. It's like, bro, you got health just like everybody else does. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kill you. Good night, sweet prince. How many, how many mangoes are we up to? We're still on eight. Battering rams have joined the field though. It's always good to see. And Crackety, I, I think at this point he's got to be cautious about committing here uh, to a big push. Oh, 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 oh! Is that the Springholds? There's the Springhold. Uh, 12 tiles of range, so it doesn't have improved roller shutter triggers just yet. But the the roller shutter triggers is coming through. Just the just the first level is already through. 
Now, I think what is particularly interesting to me is that Cowper's got a 7k score lead over Crackety, but very clearly that is not reflected in this game. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, I think that the Mongols score may still be bugged. I, I think it may still be bugged. A 7k lead here would translate to like 70,000 resources in the bank for Cowper. They're both 200-200, and I'm counting like 7k resources here for Crackety and barely over 3k for Cowper. So I think that at the moment, it's pretty even between these two guys. If anything, I'd say Crackety's probably got a little bit of a lead because he's got all of the upgrades. Though, to be fair, I guess probably a lot of that score is coming through from the emplacements that Kalp is making. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, Force March coming out. He's, he's hit the Force March. The Nos comes through. And now those spears are going to be getting right on top of the Mangonels. Watch out, Mangonels. First one goes down. Second one going to be going down as well. But you can see the, the emplacements from these outposts. Going to be able to defend. Manages to take out a second Mango. How many Mangos has he got left? He's got six left. Knights coming in. Going to be looking to try and deal with it. He manages to clean them all up, and six mangonels do survive through that damage. Oh my lord. We, what a game. What an absolute game. I tell you what, coming into this game, I didn't think we'd have this much of a nail biter. I knew it would be a good game. These guys are pretty evenly matched. This is a great matchup to watch. But these guys have just been neck and neck throughout this entire game. I guess we can take this opportunity to thank our sponsor for this video, Patreon. Thanks, Patreon. You want to improve? Check out Patreon. <laughs> I like having that little button that I can just click now. It's like, it kind of reminds me of the NFL. If you've ever watched the NFL and it's like, uh, <laughs> what is it? Like, Tostitos, the official corn chip of the NFL. And it like flashes up down the bottom. It's like, is it's time for a chip. And then th that's it. Like, I, f I feel like I'm the NFL right now. Maybe, maybe... Maybe a little bit more action than the NFL. I mean, un un unless we're like 4-1, and one, it it's not too much action in the NFL. I'm, I'm sorry, you gridiron guys. I, I know you Americans love your football. Don't, don't, don't worry, I, I like it too. I'm, I'm just talking shit. Anyway, Crackety. He's looking good. He's looking solid in this spot. The, w the one thing I'd love to see is just more control, right? Like, I, I feel like there is a bit of a false sense of security that he's got. I, even though we've we've seen how strong those rams are, I would just like to see more walls up. Whether it's palisades, whether it's stone, I don't care. Just give it to me. Ma make sure you cover those edges. Try and control that narrative a little bit. And the Mangadels start moving up. We're going to head into the cinematic mode. I think this might be the first time for this game. As the Mangadels get a huge shot off, knock out all of those spearmen and just leave them dead on the ground. More Mangadels going to be coming in on the defensive and look at the look at the boulders flying from either side. Trebuchet is here on the backside looking to fire down on these outposts. They're not going to be involved in the battle, but look at this. We've got we've got lancers running through. Elephants coming up to the front and there's no units here at the moment for Crackety. Excuse me, Crackety. You've neglected your front, my friend. Let's bring that UI back in. Let's see exactly where are Crackety's units and there they are. Of course they are. Crackety's units are always just dealing with this trade. And honestly, they're doing a pretty decent job. Cap at the moment sitting on 38 traders, which you'd think is a, is a decent amount, but he's only on 1,500 gold a minute, which uh, I guess it's, it's it kind of like, it, it peaks and it troughs, doesn't it? It's it's not always going to be, you know, a, a solid amount of, of gold coming through. So I guess that's probably about right. So Crackety doing the right thing going after that trade, but at the same time, neglecting his front means that he's somewhat overwhelmed here. And now Cap going to be sitting on 200 population up against Crackety, who's got a lot of units in queue. So might need to think about adding in a bit more production. I don't know how much production he's got at the moment. Obviously, it looks like quite a fair bit. We do hear plenty of stables on that backside as well. And there it is. The elephants charge forward. And what a beautiful game we've come out for, come out today with. I tell you what, I'm almost tempted to call that a fifth thumbnail moment when those elephants charge up to the front line. Remember, these aren't just any elephants. These are the Sultan's elite tower elephant. And now the Rams have joined the queue and we enter into the cinematic mode once again because it looks like the Mangadels are going to start going down. He's got a couple of sprinkles on the back, but there's no siege to be seen from the green player here. And Crackety here looks to continue charging forward for Mangadels, looking to turn around. Managed to fire down at the front line, hitting the hitting all of the spears. But just remember, they're only spearmen. He doesn't care too much about those guys taking shots to the face. Another Mangadel goes down. Second one might be in trouble here. Indeed, it's going to be. Third one is going to get cleaned up and it looks like all of those ex expensive Mangadels are going to be going the way of the Dodo. Only two of them are remain. And look at this. We've got point-blank elephants coming up right now. Really getting in the face of his enemy. Remember that in addition to having those hand cannoneers on top, they do also have the tusk attack, which is why you see them get up into that close range. You can kite away with them like this and keep them alive. Where are those scholars? We had 27 before. Then we lost them. Was that a relic? What was that? I don't know what that was. It was something, that's for sure. But slowly and steadily, and look at this, uh, going to be able to sweep through, manages to hit the Mangonels and beautiful counterattack here with the horsemen. And all of a sudden, those battering rams, they're trying to find a way to raid. 
But uh, unfortunately, going to get shut down here by Crackety. And we'll ride on board now with Kalp and see how he's doing on the defensive. Keep in mind, he's sitting at 164 pop. It's been a huge swing of 40 population. Technically 80 pop because Crackety was down 40 pop. Corp was maxed. And now Kalp is down 40 pop. Crackety's maxed. So a swing of 80 population in that battle. And Kalp, once again, going to be on the defensive. We're here 49 minutes through this game. It's been an absolute nail-biter throughout this. And the Khan goes down. Surely good game gets typed any second. I'm just kidding, you guys. You guys know the rules. When the Khan dies, the Mongols die. All right. Well, Mongol base is looking very, very good at this point. I mean, look how many buildings are here. This is kind of crazy, right? Like, and I think this is what makes it so hard to destroy or to hit the trade. Because you kill five traders and five more respawn. It's so damn difficult to deal with this. Because at the moment, right now, Cap is sitting on 62 traders. He's had units in his... In, in this all, all game, I feel like the best thing that Crackety can do right now is actually try and wall this off. But I don't know how he does that because you've got a wall around the berries. You've got a wall around the sacred site. So you've got to wall all of this in. Oh, no. I oh, know he just wants wood. Never mind. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. He's going for another ram raid. No, no, he's not. He's not. So solid defense coming through once again. Outpost going to be able to clean this up. So yeah, I, I really feel like Crackety's has got to start thinking outside the box if he wants to deal with this. Um, there's, there's always this trade post to go to as well. Does Crackety spot these vills? He doesn't spot these vills. Another consequence of just not walling up is now your enemy's going to be able to take some resources. There is a stone outcropping over here. Crackety's sitting on 512 stone at the moment. Uh, so he does still have plenty of stone available. 128 vills versus 148 vills. That is a huge amount of villagers in this game right now. You don't normally expect to see this many villagers in a game. But let me tell you the reason why we're seeing this many. When you've got trades that are happening... So when, when I say trades, I'm not talking about economic trades like this. I'm talking about units trade trading. When you've got so much unit... Or so many units going up against one another, what happens is your economy starts to drain. And you can no longer support that amount of trading of units. So what happens is you start making more villages so that you can support it. And this number of villagers that you're seeing is actually closer to the true number of villagers that you would expect when people are trading non-stop. This is able to support it. Once you've got maximum production, once you've got, once you've reached that point uh, where, where you've got f basically full production, this is where it is. It's actually closer to about 160 vills, uh, which is the optimal amount. Uh, the problem that you can have is that if your enemy is not, uh, not playing the same game as you and they've got a critical mass, let's say they've got 110, 120 units, then they will actually just steamroll over the top of you and it can be almost impossible for you to take any trades. So that's always something to look out for. Elite Khan over here, just chilling out, looking to try and get in on the action, but unfortunately going to be losing his life. Khan going to be going down for Kalp. And more units coming up here. Where's that Khan? He's, I think he's already dead. And now more traders going to be going down. But once again, I mean, you've, you've killed 219 traders this game. And Crackety's, and, and Kalp's just like, well, that, that's fine. I, I will just make 219 more. And he's still got more and more in queue. We can see right now. He's maxed. Forward keep. Crackety going for it. A ballsy move by Crackety. Oh, no. Oh, no. Outposts. Outposts heading towards the base. I'm curious why he didn't go for Rams, though. I feel like Mass Siege Workshop into Rams was, was really such a funny strategy. But it was like, I felt like it was actually working. So Kalp now going to be defending over on this west side. Crackety going to be pushing out here. I would love to see villagers get pulled. Like eight or nine vills, pull out here and just wall this in. I mean, you've got the stone to contest with as well. This is so hard to wall in this trading post. Compare it over here where you just literally have a forest, right? Like you just wall that in, bam, you're done. It, you, you can't do it over on this west side. There's just too many natural resources to deal with. So maybe he even clears this out, like brings 30 villagers, clears out these resources and then just walls it in. Maybe that's the play. But that's how you shut down trade. You don't shut trade down anymore by killing these traders. We learned that 230... <laughs> we learned that 230 traders ago. Uh, this has been a, a tough game for Crackety, that is for sure. But it definitely feels like he, he's on the verge of victory. Still. Faces. Non-stop rams coming through. Doing a decent job of cleaning up over on the east side. And now more villagers going to be coming out over here. Looks like he's managed to... Make his way through. Oh, there's a little bit of an outpost down here, I guess you could say. Does get spotted. Crackety realizes, oh, that's where you're hiding. Looks to try and take out some villagers down here on resources other than gold. And begins consolidating in the north. 
Four and more units coming up here. Horsemen running through. Lancers together with hand cannoneers. I mean, this is about the most gold-heavy combination you could get with the exception of, say, Janissary Lancer. That's probably about the most gold-heavy combination there is. I mean, other than just like... I don't think we've got a mercenary option in Age of Empires 4, but if we did, they'd be like 100% gold. I mean, what's 100% gold? Is there anything that's like really that gold? I mean, other than like Siege, maybe then you could talk about it. But even Siege, you've got to pay a, a substantial amount of wood. Upgrades. Upgrades. Yeah, he's 100% he's upgrades, maybe. Uh, interestingly, these Sultan's Palace... Uh, Sultan's uh, Elite Tower Elephants. Are these guys going to be dying to these outposts? I think they might. I, and there's more outposts, right? Yeah, there's more outposts that are going up. But take a look at this. I think that's a chop through. I don't know whether that was intentional. But still, we've got more fighting happening up on this north side. But I, I really feel like this is a position that isn't really going to do much. Even if you hold this position, what do you deny? Because, I mean, you, you allow the possibility of aggressing forward, but you don't deny anything. He's managed to clean up the east side completely and shut it down. I would love to see more, more walls coming through from Crackety. I've said it a thousand times before. I'll say it a thousand times more. Mangonels. Who needs trebuchets when you got mangonels? Five mangoes. Hand cannon is getting chased away. And now down on the south side, it looks like that that tower elephant is just doing work. And Kalp just under attack. It feels like everywhere, but still the traders. 85 traders. <laughs> Who needs villagers? Who needs vills? I got traders. And now we've kind of... I don't know if we've necessarily reached like a stalemate or an impasse here, but it definitely feels like it is... Like we are jostling for position on a chessboard right now. That's what it feels like to me. It, it, it is that kind of game. I feel like we've got Magnus up against Hikaru. I mean, that, that's, that's probably not that fair because like, it's, it's not like beastie against core. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't do Hikaru like that, but it, it, it's a joke guys, it's a joke. If, if you know who Hikaru is, he's, he's a, an absolute stand-up guy. If you know Kor, um, yeah, well, you, you'll know that that's just not the case with him. Um, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love Kor. He, he's, he's honestly a really cool guy. Uh, all right, well, Krakeny's uh, defense in the center. We're going to be challenged once again by the Rams. How many Rams are we up to? We're up to 10 Rams. So working our way towards that magic number, 18 Rams, and still these outposts on the south side do manage to stay alive. It looks like he's reached a little bit of a, a blockade, that being the form of outposts from his opponent. And more horsemen coming up towards the north. I'd love to see just the focus turn towards all of the enemy outposts. And that's the this is the right call. Don't go after the traders, in my opinion. Just go after the outposts. And back towards the center of the map. Look at the battering rams. The battering rams don't care, mate. These guys are like these guys are like honey badgers at this point in the game. They just don't care. They just siege down everything. I mean, he's doing a decent job of, of dealing with them, though. Kalp now sitting on max population. Crackety also max. How many resources have we got in the bank? 10k gold. But, I mean, 10k gold is meaningless when you've only got 3,000 or 300 food. Like, what are you going to do with 10k gold? You, what, you're going to buy food? <laughs> Look at the price of wood. Oh, my Lord, 318 gold for 100 wood. You could buy food, though. That's a, that's a good price for food. I'd, I'd pay that much for food, especially in this economy. Actually, in this economy, I, I'm already paying that. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but in Australia, the price of food is wild, dude. Like, it is so expensive to shop. People posting on Reddit, like you know, barely a basket full of stuff. And they're like, yeah, I just paid $108 for this. It's like, what the hell, man? That is crazy. You know how they trick you? They put like some dishwasher tablets in the bottom. That's how they get you. Those things are crazy expensive, man. My missus is always like, hey, we need more dishwasher tablets. I'm like, please, no. Those things, I, I, I paid an arm for my last dishwasher tablets. I, I need this leg, please. All right, well, the push keeps coming from Cal. He's got double the score, but remember, he doesn't have double the resources. He doesn't have double the position. That is bugged. Don't use that as a metric to judge these two. Simply judge them on their merits. And now, let's check in with Corp at the top. 75 traders, yeah. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't stop at this point. Like, you, 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 you're, you're barely doing anything. I'm, it's, it's curious to me that, like, Crackety continues to try the same thing. Surely he realizes at this point, like, he can see... He's got line of sight up here. He knows, like, oh, there's still a lot of traders that are going through there. Like, he's not on, like, six traders at this point. But Crackety's starting to lose bills and starting to lose population space. Crackety's got to wake up. I'm not sure where his attention is right now. Oh my lord. Okay, that's where his attention is. He heads up to the north corner. Is he going for a wall here? I think he might be going for a wall. He could be looking to just, at, at the very least, look to get a wall through. No, he's going to start sieging? Okay, curious. He gets in on top. Starts sieging down outposts. Sands in on the backside. Could be a nice little solid defense. He's just going to start working down these 
Okay, not bad, not bad from Crackety. And now that the south side, there's still that impasse that's down there, but we've got to push on the main front. Battering rams, hand cannoneers. I think there's a couple of spearmen. No, no spearmen to... Never mind, there's elite spearmen. And the hand cannoneers at the back of the base. Are these, are these guys actually... Are they able to one-shot over this? I think they are, but it feels like they're kind of targeting the, the silver tree instead. And slowly and steadily, they do go down. Springleton placement together with the, the cannon emplacement are going to be able to take them out. So it doesn't manage to get that wall up either. I think there were Maganels in this area, so it's not... I, I swear I heard or saw Maganels. Did I not? I swear I did. He wouldn't have deleted them. Uh, okay, there's the Maganels. I don't know if those were it. I mean, these Maganels move pretty quickly, so it definitely could have been. And now Crackety looking to try and defend this position. He bought himself a little bit of time up in that north, but, did, but didn't really look to achieve much with it. And Kalp, you can see just how much, how many resources he's going to be pulling through here. We enter into the cinematic mode. As Kalp looks to try and take out his enemy here as the horsemen move towards the battering rams. The first one, or rather the mangonels, the first one, it's under threat. Turn around, fire. Hit all the spearmen. There's not a whole lot there. The battering rams continuing to wail away. Ladies and gentlemen, the heroes of the show, the battering rams. That is the question on everybody's mind. Can the rams truly take Crackety to the ranch here? Will they be the saving grace of Corp? He's slowly working. I say slowly. He's quickly working through this production on the front side. One, two, three, four. I think he's taken out about five production buildings so far in this push. There's the sixth one. There's the seventh one coming down now. And he's got plenty more where that came from. So do not go anywhere. These are going down. This is an absolute nail but I, I think I'm casting what might be one of the greatest games of Age of Empires that we are witnessing in our lifetimes. It is happening right here. I can't believe I'm getting to see this. Somehow, some way Cap has come back from this. Do you remember how close it was? Do you remember how likely it was that Crackety was going to win this game earlier when Crackety was pushing into the base of Kalp? By the same token, th there was a chance that, that Kalp was going to win earlier with the Rams. He just doesn't seem to stop. Rams seem to be the way through this. Kalp up to 21 Rams right now. A huge amount of Rams for him coming through. And these only 12 Rams on the front. He's going to have Rams somewhere else. Where are the rest of the Rams? Somebody tell me where the ranch is. There they are. There they are. Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. He's up to 5,000 stone. That's what you should be using these Uvus for. Get get some double ram production. I know I'd be getting that, bad boy. You want that double ram... <laughs> I was going to say penetration. Oh, God. I was going <laughs> to... Ramification, baby. You want that double ram coming through. And look, look at this. Look, look at the resources that are coming in for him right now. Uh, the fact that he's not getting wood kind of hurts him here. But at least he's getting food. He can turn that into units immediately. Having an absolute field day. I'd love to see how many units or how many buildings he's killed this game. Already we can see the destroyed value, 205,000 as... What was that sound? Was that the sound of the Khan? I think that was the sound of the Khan being reborn. So slowly and steadily, crackle, Crackety... Crackily... Crackety... Crack, oh my god. Crackety manages to defend this position. He's got archers out as well. These guys are only veteran. Crackety failing to get his elite archer upgrade. Elite army tactics going to be coming in for Cap. Does he look to switch into men at arms potentially? It looks like it's going to be the case. I'm, I'm losing my ability to speak now. I mean, we're an hour into this game and it's finally happening. My ability to, to speak is going out the window. Granted, it's early in the morning. It's just 12 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so it is uh, It is truly... This is this is a game of our time right here. I mean, this is going to be up there with, with one of the greatest. We've made it to the hour mark and not many games make it to the hour mark. I, I think of a couple of games uh, that I've casted that have made it to that length. Um... I think probably the greatest defense, uh, which was one done by uh, GUA. I remember that game. That was on... Oh, what was that map? Confluence. That was... Jeez, that was a map, wasn't it? Whew. Whew. Jeez. <laughs> Thank you, devs, for not having that map anymore. Uh, that was that was a map. That was a great game. But yeah, th there's only been a few that have gone this distance. Obviously, we've, we've casted the Octagon games, but those games are naturally going to be a little bit longer. Uh, your, uh, your Octagon games always going to be a bit longer. Uh, but we do now see... The Crackety is going after outpost, after outpost. And I think this is what he needs to do. I feel like if, if Crackety is able to trade out his horsemen for each of these outposts, slowly but steadily, he's going to be in a better position. But I guess the, the problem that you're going to have with is the prospect of rams. Ram raids. Routinely ruining reams of... 
buildings. I can't think of any more R words. I want to alliterate, but there's just, it's, I don't have any more R words. Sacred site. <laughs> Sacred site neutralized by a ram. Oh, I guess, I guess today is the day for everything, isn't it? And now focusing down the outpost. Yeah, th this is definitely the right call. I think going after the outpost is the right call. Especially over this western side. Honestly, I don't know why we just don't go, like, wall this off. Kill these outposts. Wall this off. But how, how do you wall this off? I think you just got to go big, right? Like, you just got to do a nice big stone wall here. And then at least that draws rams over here. And then you can always go look to re-wall it. You know, r run a couple of units in force marched over there. That's it. That's how you want to do it. Where the crackety puts the two and two together. I mean, it's so easy for me, right? Like, I've got omnivision. I can see everything. And I, I'm not playing a game sitting there with 300 APM. I got my legs up. You know, I'm, I'm drinking my... Actually, where is my Red Bull? I'm drinking my Red Bull. I'm having a good time. I, I'm enjoying myself, man. I'm just sitting here. No, <laughs> no way. Oh my God. I, I, how did I not even think of this? We're seeing a wonder. We are actually going to see a wonder. Of course, it makes perfect sense. The question is whether the wonder's going to be able to get up because there's too many traders. I think there's, there's a nice little gap in here that might come through. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There's a potential. There you go. There we go. All right. The monument of the great Khan is upon us. Ladies and gentlemen, we get to see a wonder. This is the first wonder of season four. I mean, this is the first hour long game we're casting of season four. This is the first. I'm going to say it. This is, this, this is a candidate for best game of the year. And we're only in March. So, I mean, I'm throwing it out there right now. Game of the year, candidate number one. Remember this one, ladies and gentlemen, when we do our poll at, at Christmas time, around Christmas time at the end of the year, because this one is definitely going to be at the forefront of many a minds, that is for sure. Monument of the Great Khan is upon us. And ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our, is this our sixth? Our sixth thumbnail moment right here. Look at this guy. It is coming to fruition here. The plan you know what's wild is this is so hard to take out because of the bombards the, or the, the the cannon emplacements they've got aoe on them and so it makes it really hard to stack up units i think the best way that you can take this out is with trebs but how do you take how do you get the trebs in range of this because all of these bombard cannons have got 10 range on them already hand cannoneers together with the men at arms khan gonna be jumping in on the action as well welcome back to the battle khan for a short period of time before you get blasted. <laughs> so anyway, I started blasting and uh, the Khan died again. But we're building a monument of him, so that's fine. A monument of him, for him. I mean, this, this Khan ain't the greatest. Let's just say that much. He's a, he's a bit of a vampire. I don't know if you necessarily call a vampire. A vampire? A, a zombie. I don't know if you call a zombie great. And now Kalp. Gonna be looking to evacuate the villagers. And Kalp's Wonder is online, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to let you know that we have reached our official sixth thumbnail moment of the game ladies and gentlemen the, the monument of the great khan is upon us and i tell you what it is exciting to see in this game that we've reached this point i didn't think that we'd see it i mean coming into this game i was surprised that we saw imperial we saw delhi fast imperial we saw so many good things this game and now for the very first time i actually get to witness a wonder victory approaching on the ui it's happening this game has got everything. I don't I, I don't even know how to sell it to you anymore. This is just, I mean, do I retire after this? How, how does it get any better than this? You know, you know what? Like, uh, uh, even though Kalp has got the, the one to victory approaching, I'm really hoping we see more Rams. I need to see more Rams. The Rams are just so hilarious. And it's like, you could 100% go for a victory with Rams. Like, just sneak the Rams in the back of the base. Like, there's some, there's a couple ways you can do it. Like, dun, 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 landmark. Meanwhile, on the front, I apologize. I'm, I'm a little bit busy with my shark noises. Mangonels firing off in all directions. Horsemen trying their best to take them out. The beautiful little defense comes through that Yam network, helping out so much with that little bit of extra mobility. You can see them moving so much faster. 1.44 movement speed. And Mangonel is going to be dealing with the elite tower elephants from the Sultan. And look at this. 7,000. Is he going mass mango? The, the prayer tent in the middle is going to act as his uvu here. And now he's going to be able to have double production here. So he can look. So you can see he's going for double Mangonel, double bombard. And this is a great way to mitigate the fact he doesn't have a lot of wood available. Doesn't have a lot. Well, he's, got, he's got a fair bit of fair bit of gold. And now purchasing some more wood. What, what, what's the market rate for 100 wood at the moment? Ah, yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's affordable. <laughs> it's affordable. 200 wood for uh, 1,100 gold. What do you guys reckon for that? It's a good trade. I'll take that trade. That seems pretty good. That's kind of wild, isn't it? We often think of gold as like this really important resource. But interestingly, like Crackety has just stopped gathering stone. He's still got 149 stone trickling in. Another stone outcropping out here. I guess he's just not even interested in going keeps anymore or stone walls. Oh, <laughs> 11 mangonels. Oh, don't tell me it's happening again. <laughs> Why are there so many picture perfect moments in this game? Oh my lord. No, oh my god, Crack and he's gone for the Rams. No, <laughs> the, how the Rams have turned. The tables have turned. The Rams have turned. This game has got it all. Oh my lord. If you are not having the best, the time of your life right now, what are you doing? Pause the video. Go get yourself some popcorn. Crack it. He turns the tires. Look at the Rams. The Rams going after the mangonels. They can't hit them, but they pretend that they can hit them. Watch out. <laughs> oh my god. This game is amazing. This is the greatest game I've ever seen. Crackety now looking to just finish the game is like, I'm taking you to school. I'm taking you to school, Calp. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of your bullshit, Joe. <laughs> I've been watching too much of that AI, those AI memes with like the Joe Biden and Donald Trump play Rocket League. <laughs> or like Valorant or CSGO. It's so funny. Oh God. Those guys are good at, uh, good at Rocket League. Donald Trump. Oh, he's killed his sheep, you monster. No, and it messes him up. And now all the mangonels might get caught. We're entering into the cinematic mode. Village is going to be taken down. The Rams over on the east side. He tries his best to get in. He needs to hit that landmark, or rather that uh, that wonder. He, it looks like he's going to be in a little bit of territory trouble. Territory of trouble. I'm losing my words and I'm mincing them as well. Mangonels on the backside coming out. He's got the, the classic reinforcing double mangonels. Battering Rams trying to make their way through all of the havoc. And you can hear the cannons booming as they try to take down these battering rams. And of course, they're going to do it. There's too many of them not to. to have, a, have a, I mean, there's no way you're getting through that many battering or that, that many outposts. But hold, whoa, hold on a minute, Drongo. Hold on a minute. These battering rams are finally making connections uh, after missing them for so long, looking a little bit like a Craigslist. But now all of a sudden, they're, they're coming out with action. But we do see the numbers starting to fall off here for Crackety. And Kalp is 10 minutes away from a wonder victory. Oh, oh, it's oh, it's on a five-second timer. I'm like, excuse me, you're pausing. I don't know why. Look, the technology is not there for this to be counting down by one second at a time. I don't know what more you guys want from me. All right, the developers they put they put 46 million dollars into this game. We didn't have the budget to put this one to victory approaching by a single second, so we had to do five seconds. There was too much too much strain on the processor to make this go by individual seconds so we, <laughs> we had to do it by five I, I hope you can understand that and now the return of the ram comes through Kalp looking to turn the tide now do we do we see uh crackety uh crackety uh crackety is crackety afk did cr oh my god dude I think crackety just gave up Oh, he actually gave up. Look. Oh, no, wait, no, wait. He's getting lightweight beams. What is he doing? What is he doing? What's he doing? He's getting roller shutter triggers. He doesn't have the economy. I think he's given up. I think that's it. I think that's good game. I think after, hero uh, after a heroic effort by Crackety, he's given it all up. He's lost his mind. He said, I'm not interested in it. Fellas, if you've made it this far in the video, please go check out Crackety. Go check out Cap. They have just played what may be the greatest game of Age of Empires 4 you will ever see. There were memes. There were dreams. There were teams of battering rams that took down enemy farm emplacements. <laughs> took down, tried to take down enemy outposts. And in the end... It wasn't the last outpost that was standing, but rather the last battering ram that was standing. As Crackety here tries to scrape together the remnants of a defense. He loses building upon building and Kalp's position in this game continues to improve. We hear deleting going on. I think that's Kalp deleting things behind the scenes. 
Maybe getting rid of a few extra villagers. Indeed, he's up to... Oh, my lord, look at the rat. Look at the battering rams. He's up to 32 battering rams. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally over. You've just witnessed it. The best game of Age of Empires 4 you will ever see in your life. Thank you so much to these players. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Wow.